it's Plumber Tom. Don't forget to check in the comments below for a link where you can find additional resources like practice tests and courses that you can take. Your support helps me to be able to create more great content. Thanks for watching. Hello, welcome to this presentation of the International Mechanical Code. My name is Thomas, and in this video, we're going to go over an introduction to this code. Now, you see, I have here and will be teaching from the International Mechanical Code from 2024. This is being recorded in 2025, so might as well, right? If you are in a jurisdiction that's still using an older version of this, uh, there's not a whole lot of changes that have happened in the Mechanical Code over the past few editions, but we'll talk here in a minute about how you can identify the different changes from one edition to the next. Now, this presentation is focused on plumbers, and plumbers are responsible to know three different codes when it comes to the international codes. Obviously, the International Plumbing Code, the International Fuel Gas Code, and the International Mechanical Code. Now, these three codes have information that kind of overlaps or interconnects. They've been careful not to waste pages reprinting the same information from one to the next, but the topics are very much interconnected. For example, appliances, and especially appliances. Plumbers deal with water heaters, but you know, in the mechanical code, you look at boilers, very closely related, lots of pipe involved. Condensate drains for furnaces or other things can be run by plumbers or, or by mechanical installers. So there's a lot of crossover between these, and it's important for you as a tradesman to understand what information is in which of those three code books and where you can look for that. And that's what we'll be looking at as we study the International Mechanical Code. Now, as I present from the International Mechanical Code, again, I'm presenting from a plumber's perspective and really focusing on information that is pertinent to plumbers. There are sections in here that we won't spend much time on because I'm not HVAC and that's not my focus. So we're here to examine International Mechanical Code from a plumber's perspective. This video, again, is an introduction. I'm hoping that you have a copy of the International Mechanical Code with you that you can open up and look through as we discuss this. If not, I think it's important for you to have a copy, a physical copy, but there are other options, and we're going to look together online at iccsafe.org. You can look up their codes. They're visible online for free, and you can study that way as well. However, you cannot download and you cannot print what they have online. So it's just a quick, easy reference, very accessible from a device that's helpful if you're out there in the field, you know, and just like, oh, I got to look this up, but my code book's either in my truck or not even with me. Uh, it's very available. So we're going to look a little bit at their website and introduce you to this mechanical code that way. But again, strongly encourage you to have your own copy, especially when it comes time to taking a test like a state test. You're going to need to have a physical copy that you're familiar with, that you've read, that you've marked, and that you can easily find answers to when it comes to answering test questions. So let's get into this code. Here I have pulled up iccsafe.org on my browser, and this is the website that I'm getting. I'm going to click yes, I'll accept your cookies. And then up across the top, there are a number of things you can go to. The codes is over on the right. If you click on codes, it'll bring you to another page. Go to the I codes and click on that. And then it gives you all of the different editions of the code, you know, all the way back to 2000. Woo. Uh, I'm going to go with the 2024 I codes. Once I've clicked on that, I get this page that brings up all of their codes, right? Including the building code, other codes. I'm going to look for the international mechanical code for today. Click on that. It brings up on the left side, the table of contents. Now, I'll just point out that you can purchase access to all of these codes and get a lot, I mean, the printable or downloadable or all kinds of options. Up in the top corner, there's sign in, you can register and all of that. You don't have to do that to access these codes. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to go right in and have a look, right, without having to, to get in or subscribe or 
anything else. They're over on the left side. I'm going to go to the preface because we're doing an introduction today, but you can see the chapters are listed down the left side if you're interested in looking those up. Now, as we get into the preface, if you get the mechanical code from the 2024, you're going to notice that they've reformatted everything. Instead of having two columns on every page, they just run the words out on the page. When I got my 2024 code books, and that includes the plumbing code, mechanical, fuel gas, building, all of it, I was just like, what? <laughs> everything looks so different. It kind of blew my mind for a minute because I've been doing this for 24 years. Yeah, I started this in 2000, my plumbing career, and I've, I've been in these codes ever since. And so this is a major visual change. They're saying here on the first page that the reason is they they wanted it more uh, aligned. This is the resulting product is better aligns with print or PDF versions. Um I would disagree. I don't I don't really care if my book matches a PDF version. I kind of miss the columns. But you can find the information either way. Uh, one thing that's nice about the 2024 is that they do have QR codes on the sides in the margins that will ex help you to understand where the changes are. Now, in the past, I'm just getting into like evaluating how this works. If if you're in a previous code, you'll see different notations in the margins, like a heavy bar on the side, a dark line in the margin that would indicate this is a new thing. Uh, there would be arrows if something was deleted. There were ways you could tell what the changes were by just looking at the page. Now they're just throwing in a QR code whenever they've made a change. And when you go to that QR code, it takes you to what we're looking at now, but it has highlighted or blue wording that indicate here are the new things or the changes. So if you're really interested in what the differences are, that's it's a quick, easy way to look that up from, from the book. Now, if you're going through the code just online, you're not going to probably see those differences because, hey, you know, it, it's just the most up-to-date version. But that's useful to know when using this code book. Okay, so there's a bunch in there about the I codes and what they're what they have, what they're for, and all of that. I do want to point out a couple of things, as with the other code books that we study from, that they are interconnected and they refer to each other, and you'll find that throughout the code. Italicized items, this is important for you to know. Whenever you see a word that's italicized, that means it's kind of slanty letters. That means that that term is back in chapter two as a definition. So if you're reading along and you feel like, I don't really understand what you're saying here. Oh, but I see some italicized words. You can go and look those up in definitions and it'll help bring a lot more understanding to what's being said. It's important to understand definitions. Let's move on to the introduction to the International Mechanical Code. This is where they're gonna explain what is in this code. And as a plumber, this is where you really need to understand what is useful information to you in this book because there are major chapters in here that are not, but we're going to dig into that and see which ones are most valuable to plumbers. But let's look at this introduction. It says the Me International Mechanical Code establishes minimum requirements for mechanical systems using prescriptive and performance-related provisions. It is founded on broad-based principles that make possible the use of new materials, and mechan new mechanical designs. The 2024 edition is fully compatible with all of the I codes. So yeah, they, they interconnect. What's that really saying? That's saying that the way they come up with this code is they try and follow what's happening out there and be able to uh, change and adjust as the trade evolves. Now, this next paragraph is important. The International Mechanical Code is a model code that regulates the design and installation of mechanical systems, appliances, appliance venting, duct, ventilation systems, combustion and air, combustion air provisions, hydronic systems, and solar systems. That's the scope, like the big view of what's in this book. We're talking about mechanical appliances, ducts, vents, uh, hydronics, all that sort of stuff. Now, similar to the International Plumbing Code, the purpose of this code is to establish the minimum acceptable level of safety and to protect life, property, and property from the potential dangers associated with the installation and operation of mechanical systems. Think about what goes into a mechanical system. You've got 
electricity. You've got water or pressurized water. You've got gas, fire, um, all these moving parts. So there are some real risks and dangers involved. And the point of this is to just make sure it's done right, people will be safe, and we can get what we want out of this, which may be conditioned air, fresh air, whatever we're trying to get. I'll take you now through this book chapter by chapter real quick. And this is still in the preface, like where they give us a summary of what this is all about. So you can look this up in that preface. But it just gives us chapter by chapter. Here's what's in here. Now, chapter one is scope and administration. And this is the same thing that we find in the International Plumbing Code and other codes uh, where they just spell out how we play the rules, like the code official and permitting. And it's all the information that relates to those who enforce the code, right? Your inspectors and people like that. Now, this edition, the 2024, they rearranged a bunch of the section numbers, moved stuff around, made a few changes that way. So it, that chapter is going to look different than the previous editions. But the information's about the same. And I'm not going to go into that as we study in this course because... We've already covered that information in the International Plumbing Code, and it's the same. Now, chapter two is on definitions, and we will look at a number of definitions. Just like the International Plumbing Code, it spells out what all these words mean to help us understand the rest of the book. That's why they put definitions in the front of the book. Chapter two, you should understand what these words mean before you read the rest of this book, and that's what we'll be focusing on. Chapter three is on general regulations. This has to do with the overall construction process, installing mechanical systems. And there are some more specific things that relate just to those mechanical systems. We will focus on that chapter. Chapter four is on ventilation. Now, this is not to be confused with appliance venting. We find that over in the International Fuel Gas Code, chapter five, on how to run a vent off of a water heater. That's not what we're talking about. In the mechanical code, this is about just movement of air, creating a fresh air inside of a building. And that goes to HVAC. That's not something we deal with much as plumbers. So we're not going to cover that chapter. Same with chapter five. It goes over exhaust systems. Not a part of our curriculum, but it's basically just getting the air that's in out. I mean, so a good example, if, you're, if you've got a bathroom fan, you know, we've got some smells and some air we don't want. We just push it out. That's exhaust systems. Chapter six is duct systems. This is all that forced air stuff, right? And that's totally HVAC. All of those requirements are listed in chapter six. We're not going to study that in our curriculum, but chapter seven is on combustion air. And so long as plumbers are involved with the installation of gas appliances, you need to know about combustion air. Now, when you get to chapter seven, you find there's really not much to it here. <laughs> it just tells you to go look somewhere else. But Please keep in mind that as a plumber, it's important for you to understand combustion air. That's fresh air that comes in that can be burned when you have a gas appliance. Chapter 8 is on chimneys and vents. Again, you know, not something we're going to cover in real depth. Chapter 9, specific appliances, fireplaces, and solid fuel burning equipment. Not much there for us. But let me tell you, chapter 10, boilers, water heaters, and pressure vessels. Plumbers are very often and very much involved with hydronic heating. Chapter 11 is on refrigeration. That has to do both with refrigeration equipment and air conditioning to cool a building. We won't be covering that. But chapter 12 is on hydronic piping, and that goes right alongside with the boilers, right? As we're running pipes to distribute heat to the building, that chapter has a lot of great information for plumbers. The rest of it, we're not going to touch on much. There's chapter 13, fuel and oil piping. 14 solar thermal systems, and 15 reference standards, and so on. As you begin this study of the International Mechanical Code, again, I encourage you to take responsibility for your own learning. If you want to know this stuff, you will have to put forth some effort. It does take work in order to learn. But as with all work, it sometimes is challenging, but it's always rewarding. The time that you put into this will improve your understanding. Your improved understanding will make you a more valuable plumber. And so it's worth taking the time to dig into this, to learn. That's my encouragement to you. Have your book open. Have something to mark with. Let's study the International Mechanical Code together. I'll see you in the presentations.